Do you have a viable explanation for this? That could be, be Pelosi is suffering from dementia. This morning, Jim's different like views of bits. one conversation, the two hour plus phone call between President Biden and Chinese leader Xi Jinping, especially over the issue of Taiwan in the midst of a potential visit there by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Now, the statement from the White House reads, quote, on Taiwan, President Biden underscored that the United States policy has not changed and the United States strongly opposes unilateral efforts to change the status quo or undermine peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. Now, the Chinese readout is different. This is what the Chinese say. They say, we firmly oppose Taiwan independent separatism and interference by external forces and will never leave any space for Taiwan independence forces of any form, adding, quote, public opinion shall not be violated. And if you play with fire, you get burned. I hope the U.S. side can see this clearly. The U.S. side should abide by the one China principle and implement the three China U.S. joint communiques. So CNN's Will Ripley is in Taiwan with their reaction to the current tensions. Taiwan trains for a Chinese attack. Air raid sirens in Taipei. Fighter jets scramble. Helicopters hunt submarines. Destroyers open fire. China's refusal to publicly condemn Russia's war on Ukraine, adding urgency to the island's annual military Marky, drills, thanks for the prize, fueling Dr. fears of a cross-strait conflict. Taiwan tensions dominated at a more than two-hour call Thursday. President Joe Biden and Chinese leader Xi Jinping trading warnings on Taiwan. Chinese state media quoting Xi, those who play with fire will perish by it. The ominous warning amid growing speculation, U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi may be planning a trip I mean, let's, to Taiwan. Let's think about what the worst thing that could happen. Like, what if these tensions rise and, and accidentally... Taiwan were to accidentally shoot down Nancy Pelosi's passenger plane. That's not been unheard of, right? Like, passenger planes were shot down over Ukraine. Passenger planes were shot down by the United States of America. We shot down uh, a, 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 a passenger plane. The Soviet Union accidentally shot down, I believe, a passenger plane. So, you know, it's not unheard of that a passenger plane could get shot down. And imagine, you know, Nancy Pelosi's plane getting shot down and crashing uh, horribly and all the innocent lives that would be lost. That is something that is like too terrible to contemplate. Uh, Nancy Pelosi's plane getting shot down would absolutely be terrible. And I, I for one, don't want to see it. So I think the safest thing is that she stay far away from the Chinese province of Taiwan because obviously she's not been invited. Um, and the United States' official policy is that uh, you know, I don't think major political leaders should be going against official U.S. government policy, especially when it comes down to uh, the Chinese province of Taiwan. Mike, you mean the mainland Chinese Taiwanese pro pro uh, province of Taiwan? Yeah, exactly. He seems to be emphasizing the shut down thing. Well, I mean, just think about it. Like, think about how bad this would be. Like, Nancy Pelosi would be on this plane, and then all of a sudden, there'd be a streak of light and a rumble. And then just as she realizes what's happening, she turns and sees large sections of the plane fall away. And Nancy Pelosi would be screaming in fear. And when you're at 35,000 feet, you know, it takes a long time to hit the ground. You know, we're talking about miles to travel. So she would be in fear, just absolute f horrific fear. And she might even pass out because of the explosive decompression, but she would, as she fell through, that blue sky, that clear blue sky, she would eventually like come to, right? When she got the thicker air, just in time to see the ground. You know what I mean? So that would be fucking horrible. And I don't wish that on anyone. You know, plane crashes are really, really scary to think about. You know? Mike, why are you so horny for ending China Taiwanese independence? I know you're anti-war, but I don't know. What have you against Taiwanese? What are you talking about? It's the one China policy. Everybody follows the one China policy. That's the official position of the United States. That's the official position of the world. What do you mean? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> what if the plane just has a malfunction? Now, do I want to see the Chinese military sweep in the Taiwan of Taiwan? No, of course not. Just in the same way I don't want to see the 82nd Airborne sweep into, you know, Philadelphia. I'd be against that, too. You're implying it? I don't know, man.
I don't know. I'm just, I just have the one China policy, dude. Here, I'll explain. If you don't know what the one China policy is, that's fine. <clears throat> but I'll read it to you. The one China principle is the position held by the People's Republic of China that there is only one sovereign state under the name of China. With the PRC serving as the sole legitimate government of that China and Taiwan is part of China. <clears throat> it's the diplomatic acknowledgement of China's position that there is only one Chinese government. So like the uh, rebels on Taiwan Island argue that they're the legitimate government of China. The whole thing. That is what I like to call insane warmongering. The one China policy is a key cornerstone of Sino-US relations. The US recognizes and has formal ties with China rather than the island of Taiwan, which China sees as a breakaway province to be reunified with the mainland one day, which everybody sees, right? So, like, far-right-wingers want to invade China and overthrow their government and replace it with a far-right neoliberal shock doctrine and destroy China and turn it back into kind of a, 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 an imperial playground, right? And, and suck all the money they can and resources out, right? That's the official goal is to put our, you know, our military puppets into, into power one day. And then, you know, that's thankfully will never happen. Those claims on the mainland are from when they own said mainland. Incorrect. That's in the Taiwanese constitution. Yeah, and we can just, we could just talk about that a little bit more. <clears throat> uh, uh, uh. The if dispute and ambiguity over the meaning of China and which China stand for the Republic of China division into two Chinas at the end of the Chinese Civil War in 1955. The term China historically meant the various regimes and imperial dynasties which controlled territories in the mainland of Asia prior to 1911 when the imperial system was overthrown and the Republic of China was established. Since then, two Chinas have existed, though the PRC was not in internationally recognized at the time. The Republic of China government received, tai uh, received Taiwan in 1945 from Japan, then fled to 1949 to Taiwan with the aim to retake mainland China. Both the ROC and PRC still officially claim mainland China and the Taiwan area as part of their respective territories. The Republic of China, which only rules the Taiwan area, became known as Taiwan after the largest island. Constitutional reform in 1991 amended electoral laws to focus on the territory controlled by the Republic of China, increasingly referred to as the Republic of China on Taiwan, or simply Taiwan. So, like, they, they, the, the Taiwanese still claim to have China, to have. Uh, Nationalist China claimed the former borders of the Jing, whom they overthrew, then fought off Japan and fell into civil war before they could enforce it. Not saying it's about... They didn't fight off fucking Japan. The communists did. They were fucking losers who lost constantly. What the fuck? What the fuck? They didn't fight off shit. That's why they, that's why they were... They had the main support of U.S. and foreign allies, but they, they had a terrible record of fighting the Japanese. <clears throat> it was the, the communists had uh, by far and away the larger record of defeating Japan. Part of why they got so much support from the peasants. <clears throat> the communists did all the fighting. Jiang got routed because communists did guerrilla tactics. Chai Kai shek, I mean. Taiwan, a plan discouraged by Biden. The military thinks it's not a good idea right now. Pelosi, the island's annual military drills, fueling fears of a cross strait conflict. Taiwan tensions dominated at a more than two hour call Thursday. President Joe Biden and Chinese leader Xi Jinping trading warnings on Taiwan. Chinese state media quoting Xi, those who play with fire will perish by it. The ominous warning amid growing speculation, U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi may be planning a trip to Taiwan, a plan discouraged by Biden. The military thinks it's not a good idea right now. Pelosi won't talk about her travel plans for security reasons. It would be the highest level U.S. visit in 25 years. There could have been more dialogue between Taiwan and the Biden administration rather than have this confusing mixed signals presented out there openly in the public in a way that now China has noticed and will respond in some way. A U.S. aircraft carrier strike group is back in the South China Sea, citing routine operations ahead of Pelosi's possible visit. Who would be caught in the crossfire of a conflict between the U.S. and China? It would be Taiwan, which is right there next to China. Beijing, Beijing promises firm and resolute measures to safeguard national sovereignty. Chinese passports show Taiwan as a mainland province, even though it has its own military and government for more than seven decades. Taiwan is a country. Taiwan is our home. We are not home of anyone, not Chinese, not Americans. 
China considers U.S.-Taiwan diplomacy a red line. Beijing won't rule out using force to prevent the island's formal independence. We will show our uh, willing to defend ourselves. Defending against China's massive military would be a Herculean task. Taiwan is counting on friends like the U.S. to defend their democracy from what they call a growing threat. In recent days, Chinese drones have been conducting surveillance near Taiwan. And from the Taiwanese government perspective, even though they were briefed on that call between Xi and Biden, uh, certainly publicly they're saying that they welcome Nancy Pelosi. But there is a debate on the ground here about whether such a high-profile U.S. visit right now is helping or hurting Taiwan's long-term position when it comes to the relationship with China and trying to keep the peace, John. Gosh, that would be terrible, you know. I hope I hope she doesn't go and cause. Because now is Democratic war. Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. <laughs> House Speaker Nancy Pelosi plans to depart Friday for a tour of Asia, though whether she stops in Taiwan remains uncertain. A person familiar with the plan said Pelosi's trip includes stops in Japan, South Korea, Malaysia, and Singapore, all U.S. allies in the region. But a drop off into self-governing Taiwan was only tentative as China issues warnings about the House Speaker making a possible visit, and U.S.-China relations are at a low point. Pelosi is bringing a delegation of fellow lawmakers on the visit. Oh, really? I wonder who she's taking. She refused to answer reporters' inquiries about her plan, saying on Wednesday, in response to a question about a potential Taiwan visit, I never talk about my travel. It's a danger to me. Taiwan has emerged as a serious point of conflict between the U.S. and China, as U.S. officials have fear a more imminent Chinese move on the self-governing island. National security officials have quietly worked to convince Pelosi of the risk of her potential trip to Taiwan could pose during a highly sensitive moment. In a lengthy and candid phone call on Thursday, Chinese President Xi Jinping issued a stern warning to President Joe Biden over the issue. Public opinion should not be violated. If you play with fire, you will get burned. I hope the U.S. side can see this clearly, he told Biden. The Chinese embassy to the United States has urged members of Congress to tell Pelosi not to make the trip, which was planned for April before Pelosi tested positive for COVID-19. I would say there's been a full court press for the Chinese embassy to discourage a trip to Taiwan, said Washington Democratic Rep. Rick Larson the co-chair of Congress's U.S.-China working group. I just don't think it's their business to tell us what we ought to be doing. That was my message back. Larson said he met with Chinese San Francisco Consul General in Seattle on Monday, and, told, and he also told Larson to discourage Pelosi from traveling to Taiwan. The consulate did not respond to the request for comment. It's not my job to tell the speaker what the speaker does or doesn't do, said Larson. She has far more experience in these things than I do, and so I will trust her judgment. On the Taiwan question, we have made our stance loud and clear, said Lee. The embassy is making all our efforts to prevent pr the peace and stability, preserve the peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait and the stability of China-U.S. relations being damaged by the potential visit of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan. We hope serious consequences could be avoided. This is in the common interest of both China and the U.S. Why does she want to go to Ch Taiwan so bad? To spit in their face. To spit in their face. That's it. I've got an idea. Donald Trump goes to Taiwan and becomes president there. Yeah. It's inappropriate for foreign governments, including the Chinese government, to attempt to influence the ability or right to travel for the speaker, members of Congress, or other U.S. government officials to Taiwan or anyone else in the world, LaHood added. Like, the U.S. likes having Taiwan because it represents a strategic ally should we ever need to attack China. You know, imagine if, if Florida broke off from the U.S. and then signed a deal with China... And then we started, and then China started sending billions of dollars of aid, military aid to a, uh, the government of Florida, which also claimed to be the government of the entire United States. Uh, imagine if Florida went into martial law for 40 years and started killing leftists and Democrats all over the state. And then uh, China was starting to send, you know, oh, we're going to send, uh, we're going to send uh, the uh, president to visit uh, Florida. That is, that's the equivalent. Now you're starting to get it. And why am I opposed to Taiwan? Uh, listen, I'm not opposed to Taiwan. You know, listen, just because they slaughtered leftists 20 years ago doesn't mean that we should, you know, keep, we shouldn't keep score of the governments that murdered and disappeared leftists. I mean, like, obviously, like, as a leftist, you have no interest in, in having a grudge against any government that would kill you. Like, obviously, you don't want that. That would be fucking bad, you know? You don't want to keep score, you know? Anyway, we're all leftists here, right? I am just glad to know that if I were killed by my government, none of you would be anti-government. You would be like, what do you have against America? I'm glad to know. 
Don't keep a score, chat. Don't keep a score. <clears throat> anyway, uh, uh, on better news, they really like to train international death squads for fascist regimes as well during the dictatorship years. Oh, yeah. On more interesting domestic political news, there was a poll that just came out that showed Fetterman up six against Oz. And this was the shocker, chat. Ryan was up against J.D. Vance at Ohio. This is the shock poll result. And, of course, Beasley over Bud in North Carolina Senate race. So, right now, John Fetterman is considered to be the premier pickup opportunity for the Democrats. It's an open seat. But there's also an open seat in Ohio, and uh, I think Bud is, a, is an incumbent. I don't want to be associated with most Republicans. However, I definitely am not a fan of the mod mentality of the left. What the fuck is that even? Unfortunately, there really isn't much of a left in America. Uh... Taiwan isn't a former colony, exactly, it's just part of the country. Taiwan is just a bunch of, uh, it, it was a government that escaped being held accountable for their crimes. <laughs> like, that's, that's it. And then they committed a whole bunch more. So I don't think, you know, personally, if I were president, I would not, I would uh, cancel any agreement with Taiwan. And I would want to cl align closer with China. I would approach a, a, I would have a totally different foreign policy than what America has with, with some, with, with Taiwan. Uh, I wouldn't be interested in Taiwan. I'd be interested in the, you know, largest country in the world, with the second largest economy, and maybe wanting to promote peace, trade, mutual understanding, and uh, promote what I felt are good values within China, you know? By treating them as an equal and a partner, as opposed to trying to secretly uphold a uh, hostile regime. People who know nothing about this topic rushing to type it. I mean, one of the things that's really sad is like, because we have the, whatever the American foreign policy blob is, somebody once told you that Taiwan is an ally, which means you now need to align your personal politics with some, you know, uh, geopolitical entity that you have no connection to whatsoever. And it very possibly you could be sent to die for this organization. You might want to know what you're signing up to die for, right? Taiwan was conquered by Japan from China, then annexed by America, and China wants it back, right or wrong. I would say that it's not quite right. I mean, the, the Chinese, the Japanese handed the government over to the nationalists, who were defeated in mainland China and fled to Taiwan. And the, you know, Communist Party didn't have a huge amount of, like, amphibious capability at the time, and then they went and fought the U.S. in the Korean War, where we were the genocidal aggressors. The United States committed genocide in Korea. Uh, and before the Korean War, the government we supported, the anti-democratic military government we supported in the South, killed 100,000 leftists. So yeah, I would go ahead and say that Taiwan's continued existence. But again, you're a leftist, but you don't feel any connection to the people that were killed for being leftists? You should probably be very suspicious of any government that's killing hundreds of thousands of leftists. You no, know, you, should, you should get that you... You're only protected because of the current political conditions of the Imperial Corps. But things change, they're going to come for you. I, I think if you don't know about the repression of the left in Taiwan, the first thing I would encourage you to do is do a Google search. You should at least like do a basic Google search. Before you come at me at 100,000 miles an hour, the White Terror, which lasted from 1947 to 1990, leftist political dis dissidents and intellectuals, Four, three to 4,000 executed and 140,000 imprisoned. You might want to know what the fuck you're talking about. Mike, why don't you like the Taiwanese government? Is this my edgy take? Uh, is this even edgy? Or is this just me knowing history that people don't know? Mike, read more about Taiwan history. <laughs> you can see this is a very biased article. Even though a second ago I pretended this never happened, I will now fire off all my pre-made anti-China takes. Yeah, exactly. Jesus Christ. I don't think the U.S. should align. If I were in charge, I wouldn't align with Taiwan because they are not a government that respects political dissidents or the left. But Mike, it's so different since 1990. Were you born yesterday? Were you actually born yesterday? Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, Mike, uh, all the anti-leftism just disappeared instantly. Yes, they did a prison 140,000 leftists and political dissidents, but that was just the past, man. It's all over now. You were still alive when it was happening, but it's all over now. Mike, how did China come to be a democratic country that is doing reparations right now? I don't know if born yesterday is your middle name or what, but anyway, the United States acknowledges the one China policy, and that's my position too. As far as fighting and dying for Taiwan, 
Never. Not one drop of blood for Taiwan. If you're Ty if you're offended by this, leave. Did Chatter ask how Chatter became a he he asked Taiwan how did Taiwan become a democratic country? You know, you know a country is very much a democratic country when it's in martial law for 42 years. That's the first step. Here's how you build a good democratic country, chat. The first thing you do is you're in martial law for 42 years, and during that martial law, you execute thousands of leftists and imprison hundreds of thousands more. And then boom, bango, boom, now you're good. Just so happens you are, you're set up as a military outpost for a foreign imperial power, but you're now democratic and good. <clears throat> uh, so Portugal, Spain, and Greece aren't democracies? Uh, I would definitely say that uh, uh, the difference between those countries is that uh, they aren't a rump state of a former military power uh, in a civil war. And yeah, they have bad histories of killing leftists in those countries. True. And... And I, and I just want to say this as a very basic point, and if you disagree, I want you to unfollow and unsub and leave. Any kind of pro-war position with China is absolutely anathema to anybody who's a leftist, period. And anyone who plays along with, like, brinksmanship with China, you're not a leftist. You're a fucking liberal at best. Did you see the police commissioner in Spain admit to doing a false flag terrorist attack back in Barcelona back in 2017? I didn't see that. What would a Chinese Taiwan look like? Would it be like a U.S. territory? Would China count them as part of the mainland? What do you mean by that question? What are you, what are you trying to ask me? No by the way, I am, I'm happy to criticize China. China has billionaires. They shouldn't have any. I mean, they do execute them from time to time for catching them for corruption, but they still have them. And they have definitely adopted liberalization, liberalizing reforms and things that I disagree with. And I think that they are, uh, too, they are way too harsh on dissidents. Um, but I understand it. I understand why the Chinese government is the way they are. When you look at what happened to Russia, when you look at what happened to the former Soviet Union, when you look at how many places have been uh, 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 colonized and destroyed, uh, I understand why there is a kind of siege mentality. It's understandable to me. Wait, uh, where is the... Where, it says Hassan Abi reacts to Biden says the U.S. will defend China. What the fuck is this clip? Okay, hold on. So anytime someone says anything about Taiwan or defending Taiwan militarily from America, they also will loudly reinforce the one China policy. So I don't know why the fuck he's like, you know, talking a big game about uh, Chinese Taipei as though, you know, uh, as though they're going to have like a difference in opinion. So here, I mean, if you want to see that, yeah, let's go. From President Biden's trip to Asia, in a news conference with the Japanese Prime Minister, Mr. Biden indicated go that quick, the U.S. will place. step in to protect Taiwan if the island is ever Come attacked on. by mainland China. The president was responding to a question from our Nancy Cordes, who joins us now from Tokyo. Uh, so, Nancy, there's official U.S. policy, and then there's the way the president answered your question. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning to you. And there's no question that this was a major departure from longtime U.S. policy. And it means that if China were to make good on its threats to take over Taiwan, the U.S. could get pulled into a military conflict with the world's second largest superpower. They're already flirting with danger right now. The president's warning took regional allies and even some of his own aides by surprise. Are you willing to get involved militarily to defend Taiwan if it comes to that? Yes. You are? That's the commitment we made. The idea that it can be taken by force, just taken by force, is just not, is just not appropriate. His comments quickly drew international headlines. For years, the U.S. has had a policy of so-called strategic ambiguity when it comes to Taiwan, a self-governed island that China considers its territory. A top Chinese spokesman fired back at Mr. Biden. Taiwan is purely China's internal affair, he said. We won't stand for any foreign interference. The White House sought to soften the president's stance, claiming our policy has not changed and that Mr. Biden simply committed to provide Taiwan with the military means to defend itself. Yeah, look at that, dude. What's up? As the president said, our policy has not changed. Uh, uh, he reiterated our one China policy. He's so fucking stupid. He's absolutely fucking stupid. Biden is an absolute total dipshit. I'm in Taiwan for work for the next two months. Dude, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't even know what that means. This is also funny because aides have to run out and like say, no, 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 Brandon wasn't making policy. Brandon is, uh, Brandon's wrong. Brandon's wrong. 
I don't know why. I think I think one of the problems that I have is that I have views that are firmly what I consider to be mainstream leftist takes. And then whenever somebody in my chat gives me the liberal take, I get so frustrated. I get so frustrated that even here, I have to hear the same bullshit, pro-war, psychotic, U.S. military, U.S. foreign policy blob shit, constantly re repeated back to me, the suicidally stupid shit like, we're going to fight China. My God, is that a dumb take? I, I mean, Jesus Christ. So I'm not always the most persuasive. I'm, always, I'm not always in my, like, be nice persuasive mode. I'm like, leave. Please leave for my mental health. The idea that the U.S. should... I don't want to see one drop of blood of American men, women, and children killed for an island that has done horrific crimes against the left and whose entire purpose was a Cold War outpost. And the United States is happy to trade with mainland China all day, every day, when it comes to exploiting their workers to make profits for our corporations. But then you're going to stand back and go, oh, Taiwan is good, China bad. Like, give me a fucking break. Brandon is doing Brandon uh, Mac attack shit, okay? He's just doing Mac attack shit. Don't worry about it. Talking about your path of exile build. What is one China? Uh, one China is whatever China's Taiwan policy is. <laughs> That's it. That's the irony. I mean, we were scared of China like, when they were quite like literally when when he says like a oh, quarter of the powerful the they China are now. Policy, that means like do you think you we're going to think of China, China now or, or Taiwan? You mean Chinese Taipei? That's that's what they're saying. But of course, like you know, Americans love uh, meddling in the business of other countries, and uh, that's it. Damn, this is a good take. Thank you, Hassan. Chatter implying you look slim, buddy. Don't ban me, Hassan. Thank you, Hassan, for this incredibly good take. The, war, the leftist take on war is no war but class war. Exactly. What the? You just came. All right, back. I, I want to make my position of Taiwan very clear. If tomorrow Taiwan got into a conflict with a main a mainland China, my position is utter neutrality. That's my position on Taiwan. Utter neutrality, not our business. Americans are dangerously and uneducated on China's history. All you could do is try to educate ignorant people, and hopefully, eventually, it soaks in. You're fighting their entire life of indoctrination. I mean. Of course, because China represented one of the most powerful communist party-led countries in the world, who are on the other side of the Cold War. The United States was the capitalist power. So it's been, uh, it's been the job of our culture and our, our education system to foment hatred and to uh, otherize China and to uh, discredit all of their positions and views on the rest of the world and to undermine them in every way that we could. Bro, if you told Americans Taiwan was a fascist state in exile, Americans would like them even more. Well, they were a fascist state in exile, but now they're fine because they had a, they, they've, they're a democracy now, right? The fascist part of their history is over. Anyway, uh, let's keep giving... We, we armed them the whole time. They were a fascist government, but you know we had nothing to do with it. We interfered in their domestic politics for 40 years, but you know they're just naturally... The politics they have now is just natural. It's just the will of the people. They're doing reparations as well. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, the reparations makes up for the thing. Like, if we gave reparations to black people, then that would mean that the history of slavery is over and no one could ever bring it up again. Like, reparations make it so that the thing that you... You don't even have to feel guilty for the bad thing that you did. Once you write a check, you're set. This is sarcasm. If something happens with China, the racism is going to be out of this world. It already did with COVID! It's already off the war. China shut down and saved their own people from COVID and, de and developed their own vaccine. And the United States loses a million people and people bl are calling it the China flu, the Chinese virus, as opposed to going, huh, maybe Donald Trump's uh, uh, policies were pretty bad. China didn't warn the world, even though they locked down a whole city. It says, otherwise China, check closed, tags say all made in China, TV made in China, cheap toothbrush made in China. Seafood I purchased at a supermarket made in China. Per present for my kid made in China. Yeah, otherwise. All that is, Stoney, is them exploiting Chinese labor for low pay, right? You understand that capitalists don't give a shit about your American nationalism, right? Corporations were able to pay those workers who made those things less than they would have to pay American workers. So they went and exploited that country. China did it intentionally. They said, foreign capital, come in, invest in our country. 
Get bring us your designs, bring us your uh, money, bring us your resources, help build up our country. They did it with intention. They intentionally did it. And the capitalists came because they could make greater profits selling uh, uh, goods made by low-cost labor. They didn't come here because they, they were like, oh, China good now. They didn't give a shit. It was about trying to, to uh, uh, exploit a poorer country. Thankfully, China didn't act like Jamaica or Haiti. They actually said, we're going to keep control over the economy. We're not going to let these foreign corporations run wild. We're going to develop our country and get money out of it. And that's why they're the second largest economy. U.S. investigations of Chinese scientists expand focus to military ties. Authorities in the United States increase scrutiny of Chinese researchers' background, causing concern about unfair accusations. Well, every Chinese person in America is a spy. Remember? I think one of the things that's really frustrating for me is like, is China perfect? Absolutely not. Of course not. Is China even preferable to what we have in the West? No. I'm, I'd much rather live in Finland than I would in China. Call me uh, uh, not a true leftist, if you would. I want to push America more to be like Denmark or more to be like the Netherlands or more to be like Finland. or more to be... But you know what Sweden's fucking foreign policy was when we were invading Vietnam? Helping Vietnam. Literally giving money to Vietnam. So yeah, I don't prefer China, but I don't support the United States imperialist fucking objectives of domination. <clears throat> There's a lot of innovation and patents by Chinese Americans and Chinese exchange students. Dumb I mean, of course. I'd rather live in China than Indonesia, where we killed hundreds of thousands of leftists. Everybody should really learn about the Jakarta method. I recommend you read that book. If you're, if you're curious about my foreign policy takes and why I'm so suspicious of American uh, 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 relationships, go look at the Jakarta method. Go look about the uh, usurpation, uh, uh, op read a book called Operations Ajax. There's a book, a very well-balanced book called All the Shah's Men about uh, Operation Ajax and overthrowing the democratically elected leader in Iran, Mohammad Mossadegh. Go take a look at what we did in South Korea prior to the Korean War. Go take a look at what we did in Vietnam. Go take a look at what we did to support the uh, military dictatorships in Argentina and Brazil. Like, there's a lot of... The Devil's Chessboard is another great one. Like, all those things, you'll start to understand why, you know, I am not in support of most of the U.S.'s position and the institutions of American power. <laughs> Actual debate pervs calls Hassan bad at debates, yet being successful in them against full-on politicians and big pundits, of course. Hassan's good at debates. Pentagon prepared to protect Pelosi with fighter jets and ships if she visits Taiwan? God, you know what would be so terrible if an American plane act like can you imagine an American ship accidentally shooting down Nancy Pelosi? That would be so horrible. Like, you know, everybody's sitting there in the high tension kind of environment and like their fingers on the trigger, and one of these, you know, enlisted troops, he's a blip on the early morning radar, and he panics and he fires. Can you imagine how terrible that would be? That 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 could that could plunge us into war. Because it would be uncertain. Who shot down Nancy Pelosi? Did the Chinese shoot down Nancy Pelosi? Ted Cruz would run out and say, we gotta launch the nukes. The Chinese would say we didn't do it. America would put all our troops on fucking alert. We'd launch our forces. Our, our, our aircraft carrier in Tokyo would launch. Our, our ready forces in South Korea would get in position. You know, all the U.S., you know, wrapping China like an anaconda with all our forward deployed forces, where they would all fucking engage. And then the, uh, you know, the U.N. would finally put out a report in two or three months and, you know, look at the fucking shrapnel and look at the, the, the you know, pieces of the missile and finally, oh, it was the U.S. shot down their own thing. That is absolutely dangerous. Pentagon is prepared to send fighter jets and warships to protect House Speaker Nancy Pelosi if she visits Taiwan. Developing security plans to keep Pelosi safe should her trip to Taiwan in August go ahead. Jesus Christ. <sighs> I just want to, want to know how he manages his chat the way he does with 20 to 30k people. It's insane. He does a good job. A good job. All right. I didn't mean to get into this big long thing about China. I just, as a China critic, it's galling to see people say dumbass fucking shit. It really is. You could probably call me a China, a China critic. I think that's a fair, a fair uh, uh, position uh, of my position. But when China does something right, like, for example, the high-speed rail, you should copy that. 
I know more about China in these past hour than so of my entire high school and college. I know it's sad. But yet you're told you're supposed to fight this... You're supposed to hate these people. You're supposed to fight these people. And it's like, what do you think is going to lead to a better world? The United States in a hot war with China and Russia or lowering the temperature? Lowering the fucking temperature. Are you watching the stream unsubbed? You're making income inequality worse. You are doing anti-praxis. We are the only Twitch stream that will not accept scam advertisers and I will never fuck you over by selling you crap.